Hi, I'm Phaedra Lamb with Real Del Sol. I'm here at Faria Farms to talk about the dollars and cents of food production, specifically strawberries. Who doesn't love strawberries? How do they get from this farm to your home? And what are the challenges that some farmers face? I'm here with Farmer Glenn to talk about all those things because he is our expert for today. I'm Glenn Hasegawa. Um, I the manager of uh, Faria Farms and uh, this is the Del Mar Ranch in Ventura, California and uh, it's a 17-acre uh, organic uh, strawberry ranch. Uh, I've been farming my whole life. Uh, it's, it's been a family business and uh, so I've been around farming pretty much my whole life. Um, went to college to study uh, agriculture and and uh, came back and been working on the family farm ever since. Uh, I, I like strawberries because it's a, it's a challenging crop. It's not not a real easy crop to grow. So uh, you have a lot of challenges. You get challenged quite a bit with uh, all the different elements. Uh, the uh, weather, uh, pests, uh, market, market conditions, and now uh, pandemics. <laughs> uh, strawberries like um, temperate climate. They really like Ventura County is probably one of the best best strawberry growing areas in in the world um, because strawberries like um, they like. Uh, Temperate climates, it doesn't get too where it doesn't get too hot and it doesn't get too cold. So we always get a uh, sea breeze here, so it never gets too hot, and and also the ocean in the winter keeps it from getting too cold. So it's uh, kind of an ideal place. Uh, well, the the parts, um, yeah, the the parts are you kind of have the plant here and these are the leaves obviously and here's the like the green strawberries these are going to be red in probably two weeks or so they'll be ready to pick so they kind of start out as first they start out as a flower and then wow. and then they turn into a green strawberry so, that, it started... so all the flowers they start popping out of the middle here and the crown you can see one that wow. You can see one way down there. See, that's a flower just popped out. And that's called the crown. The crown is right here, like where where the where the plant comes out of the ground, and then and then the flowers pop out of there, and eventually the flowers get a little longer like this, and then they hit the sun, and then the flowers turn into small green berries, and then the green berries turn into the red berries. Right here. Uh, the plastic is to kind of keep weeds down and it also heats the bed up so it kind of makes a little greenhouse, um, keeps the roots warm on the plant so they, um, so they grow better. Right now it doesn't really need the plastic but in the winter when it's cold the extra warmth uh, helps the plants grow. Uh, you need good, good, good ground, good, do uh, good soil. Um, water, obviously, uh, and uh, you need fertilizer, um, and basically you need Mother Nature's help. Um, because, yeah, since I'm organic, I don't spray anything, so some of the pests come in, but there's a lot of natural enemies of the pests that kind of help you out. and. Uh, yeah, there's uh, something called a mite. It's a, like almost like a little microscopic bug that that uh, kind of sucks the sucks the life out of the leaves. That's probably our main uh, our main pest, and uh, it's kind of hard. It's a pretty tough pest. So um, uh, strawberries are really delicate. They 
hasn't been a machine invented that, that really can do a good job and plus you always have color that you have to, uh, the, the strawberry, the color of the berry and they haven't been able to come out with a machine that can differentiate ripe from unripe. So uh, on a busy day we could pick up to maybe a thousand boxes even. Ow. Yeah, yeah, a lot of strawberries. Yeah, they pretty much go straight from the farm to the store. Um, they're, but they're because of the plastic and stuff, they're pretty clean. Uh, they're a little dusty sometimes, but we recommend that just people just rinse them off before they eat them. Uh, no, mainly from uh, October is when we plant, and then we start harvesting in maybe December, and we harvest until July, early July. Uh, not a whole lot, but um, they don't like too much water, uh, but you just try and keep them moist most of the time. Uh, well, we plant in uh, right around the beginning of October, first week in October we plant uh, and we're harvesting our first strawberries right around Thanksgiving. Right around there, so they, they, yeah, they month. pop out in about a month, we start getting a few, but not too many because it's cold. And then um, after that, we just keep on going in circles all the way yeah, till July. Wow. Yeah, we just keep on going and the plants just keep on pumping out. No, if you think about it, these plants are amazing because it just keeps going. Yeah, wow. We just keep going in circles for seven months. Okay. You know, so. The only thing is during certain times of the year, like right now, you, you go faster because they get ripe fast. So yeah. you, in the winter, you make maybe one round for the whole week. Yeah. Now we're, only, we're almost making three rounds per week because they're, they ripen up so fast. We plant once a year. Oh, where can you uh, Well, we harvest them. We have to hand harvest them with our workers and then uh, we check the quality and then we send them on a truck to, the, to, the, uh, to a cooler a cooling facility uh, and they cool the strawberries and they're they're loaded onto big trucks um, at the cooling facility and then they'll go all across the country to the grocery store yeah you don't want to go past probably four days um, the, the shelf yeah the shelf life isn't very long on the strawberries they're pretty fragile uh, the challenges like I was saying earlier uh, Weather is probably the number one challenge. Uh, we have no control over any of that, so we're kind of at the mercy of it. Um, and pests uh, can be can be a problem. Um, labor sometimes labor is hard uh, to get enough workers. Uh, that that's an issue. Um, and uh, market conditions sometimes the price is really bad when there's too many strawberries. Um, or even like right now, it's pretty bad pricing because there's not many people eating strawberries because of uh, because of the because of the flu because of COVID. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely had an effect. Um, well, it's uh, I guess people are eating more strawberries, but like frozen, <laughs> which doesn't help us a whole lot, but. Uh, yeah, there's certain times of the year towards the end of the season we send stuff into uh, they're called canneries and they make jam out of it. Uh, I, I work with Smuckers, so most of you've heard Smuckers, Smuckers jam. So that's where our, that's where our wow. strawberries go. Well, there is a little fun fact about strawberries: is the it's the only fruit that has the seeds on the outside of the of the of the fruit. But you can't plant the, the little the seeds. They won't, they won't uh, germinate. Uh, we get plants, their little root, uh, little rootings from uh, the nurseries. And actually the strawberries come from up north, up, up in Oregon. And uh, they send them down here and uh, we put them in the ground and um, 
The interesting thing is kind of um, they plant the plants up north in Oregon or right on the California-Oregon border. So it's farther north. So uh, winter kind of comes earlier because it's farther north. And uh, so they put them in the ground and then strawberries, they like to hibernate or like, they like to, uh, we call them go dormant. They like to go dormant um, because they, they can store up energy when they go dormant, kind of like a bear goes into hibernation. Uh, so it gets colder up there and the plants go to start going to sleep and then they yank them out of the ground like in the middle of the night and they rush them down to Southern California and then the plants think it's springtime. Oh. So then they, they shoot, they come alive That's so cool. and then they, sh yeah, they shoot out their leaves and then they start thinking that, hey, it's, uh, it's springtime, we're going to start growing and that's what, uh, that's how they start. Uh, I love working outdoors, um, no office, no desk. Uh, I like working with my people, they're all hardworking people, nice people, humble people. Um, and uh, I like the challenge, I like cha the challenge of growing strawberries. It's uh, not an easy crop to grow. Um, I think you, you could probably just ask for, uh, you know, the times are tough right now, but you can ask for local, local fruit and support your local farmers. Uh, the product is right, uh, right down the street from you. Um, get to know your farmers, you know, it's kind of nice to know where you, where the food you eat is coming from rather than just going to a grocery store and, and buying it and you know, not having any idea. Um, so mainly just support uh, local farming. Uh, I just eat them right off the plant. Yeah, I mean, I, I eat them every day. Kind of come out in the morning and, and eat a few to see what, uh, the flavor kind of goes up and down. It's never, never the same, depending on what the weather is. So I'll just come out and eat them right off the plant. That's, that's how I like to eat them. Mm, I don't really have a local stand or anything like that, so most of my stuff goes all over the United States. Um, I'm sure some of it stays in California, but uh, yeah, it travels wherever, wherever they need stuff. Yeah, a lot of the grocery chains, Vons, Albertsons. Uh, so it's possible, those, those strawberries at Vons? Yes, they could be. Yeah.